Melody Vassal's Top 100 Games of All Time. Melody Vassal's Top 100 Games of All Time. Top 100. Now this is, I'm just here as a color commentator. This list is Melody's Top 100. I think this is the fourth year that she has is do, putting the list together. And your games have changed a lot, I think. Uh, when I'm looking at the list here of Melody's games, there are quite a few new games on the list. Um, and a few games that didn't even make the list last year. In fact, your number two game is absolutely brand new. And your number five game, and your number, well, we're getting ahead of ourselves. We're here to talk to you uh, about the top 100, so we'll get started with that right now. <laughs> number 100, Bird by the Bean. Birds, Bugs, and Bees is a game where you slap the table, clap your hands, tweet, tweet. make a sound for the beans, or whatever else. Uh, as the cards are turned over, and you need to be the first one to do that. Why do you like Birds, Bugs, and Beans? Um, I like Birds, Bugs, and Beans because of all the f funny sounds that you make, or motions, or slapping the table, or whatever. Um, I usually always get confused with the Bean dressing up as a bird. I always got confused. I don't know why. Um, but I like the part where you add the different animals if you want to. Sometimes we do the whole deck. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's just a lot of fun to play. All right. Birds, bugs, and <coughs> beans. Number 99, Evo. This is the new version of Evo. Uh, I just got this one this year from Asmodee. It's their reprint of the original game. Uh, Evo is a game in which each player controls a group of dinosaurs trying to stay alive and climb it on an island. There's not enough space for everybody, so you have to fight and maneuver against the other dinosaurs. And you can evolve your dinosaur, adding extra feet and ex uh, lengthening your tail, extra uh, claws or special abilities to attack the other dinosaurs or just to, to survive in the cold or the heat. Why do you like Evo? Um, I like Evo because uh, I really like the part where you make the dinosaur, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, then fighting off the other dinosaurs to get your island. That was also a lot of fun. Um, the dinosaurs actually look really cool. Yeah, they really do look cool. It's a really good looking game. All right, number 99, Evo. Number 98, Drop and Come. We don't actually have number 98, Drops and Company, because it was too big. We just weren't able to keep it. I think we got rid of it when we moved from Korea, I think. Uh, but Drops and Company is a game in which there's these actual conveyor belts that you turn and try to make a little piece of candy fall down into buckets below. Your bucket. Uh, your bucket, not somebody else's. So, why do you like it? Um, I like Drops and Company because I like the conveyor part because I like gears, machinery, and all other stuff like that. Um, the moving the candy around, I thought that was a lot of fun. Um, trying to get into your bucket that sometimes it was really easy, but I liked the way the board stood up vertically. I thought that was really cool. All right, so drops and company. Number 97, Igor, Life of the Party. Igor. Igor. Is Igor. It, uh, I'm pretty sure it's Igor. Igor. Okay. Well, anyhow, Igor, The Life of the Party, is Igor. a card game in which rules change, kind of like Maui, um, and you're not necessarily sure what the rules are uh, as you uh, play the game, and it's kind of a crazy game with all different things going on. Why do you like this game? Um, I like this game because the making the rules part is a lot of fun, um, and the artwork is like right from the movie. That's true. Which is really cool. Um, 
just playing the different cards, making up the rules, trying to win. If this, it just helped this game get better. All right, that's Igor, life of the party. Igor. Number 96, the Swana. Botswana is the newest in a line of reimaginings or reworkings of games like Loco and Quandary. It's the same game, essentially. This one's from Griffin Games and comes with certainly different components, little animals. And I believe this is the first game on Melody's list that is brand new this year at number 96. Why do you like Botswana? Um, first of all, I really like the artwork of how they made the animals and the cards. Um, the other part that I like this game is because I like how you're like trying to get your animals to get that the most points. Um, um, it's also a strategy game. I kind of like strategy, and I I think I won one game because there are elephants that were on five, but. Um, another animal that were on zero, and I kept collecting the zero, which everyone wondered why, and everyone else collected the other animal that had five, but really the whole time I had a zero for the five and the five for the zero. So right, you're collecting five. animals and then playing cards to make those animals worth a certain four, amount of points, four. trying to get the most points. Botswana. Number 95, Los Montes. We have the Korean version of Los Mamfos, which also can be called Donkey Poo. Donkey Poo. Okay, <laughs> and I'm not kidding. In this game, you have these big wooden donkeys that, as the game progresses, you will feed them food, and at certain points in the game, you will then extract that food. And you're trying to basically guess how much food is inside the donkeys, or if you, you know, there's a kind of a bidding war to see who's going to. Uh, get the most points when the donkey comes out of its food or the food comes out of the donkey. Why do you like a game about poop? <laughs> because I like the way how you put the food in the donkey then it comes out. Um, <laughs> um, Gross. Also, I don't really understand why they put the moving part in the game. Nah, it's just to confuse you, I think. Maybe. Um, but Works for me. I never know anything. They're sitting down anyway, but... Um, <laughs> I like the part where you try to guess um, how much food is in the donkey. I really like that part and then trying to get the most. Um, and the spin wheel things and the artwork is really cool. Alright, Los Mampos. Number 94, Draco. game that's brand new to the list that's Draco. Draco is an asymmetrical game which means the two sides are not balanced one or they are balanced but they're very different. One person controls a big dragon who's wounded in the middle of the board. The other person controls three dwarves and you move them around and you fight one against another and you're trying to take the other person out. The first person to do so is the winner. Why do you like Draco? Um, I like Draco because I played the dwarves against my dad and I beat him. <laughs> Um, and the components look really cool, like the different drawers, the dragon, um, and the cards actually look really cool. I like the part where when you win the dragon, you put a token on one of these things, and when you fill that up, one of the special abilities go away. Right, if you take out the dragon's wings, he can no longer fly around the board. If you take out... Uh, a, his breath, he can no longer shoot fireballs. Or and, feet. And then he can't and then walk. There, and then the, so it's, it's, it's interesting because he, if he takes out each dwarf, they get weaker because there's fewer dwarves, but they can take out parts of the dragon. So it's almost like a simplified ogre in a sense, but mm. very simplified, and you like I it. I think the board's a little too small, for my opinion, but still, it's a lot of fun to play. Draco. Number 93, verse Shrey. Today we're taking a look at reverse charades, which actually is not at our house, it's at uh, our, our church because I use it in youth group all the time. So but fun. we have some new expansions here. We have uh, Girls Night Out, Girls Night Out Holiday Edition and, and Sports, Sports Edition. Edition. Reverse charades works where one person is guessing and everybody else is acting. So I will show you something. Knight in Shining Armor, <laughs> Mary Kay, the Yoga, Statue of Liberty, um, the hand-me-downs, and basically 
as a group, you have to act that out for the one person and they I guess. Think. So it's reverse charades. Instead of one person acting out for everybody, everybody's acting out for one person. Why do you like reverse charades? Um, I like reverse charades because it's just a lot of people guess doing it and one person guessing, which is the opposite of the regular charades. Um, and I think that's a lot of cool. I like acting out because it's a lot of fun to act out things to me. And guessing it is just as fun because you're trying to figure out what they're doing and with like kids it's a lot of fun because they're like um what should we do and group effort group effort is so much better than one person trying to do it yes it's a really really funny party game <laughs> reverse charades number 92 word on We actually don't have Word on the Street Junior. We have regular Word on the Street here, uh, although they're very similar. There's a line of letters in the middle of the board. On your turn, you're asked, or on your team's turn, you're asked to give a word like, what's your favorite food? And you would say spaghetti. And then you would move over the P, the H, the, uh, G the G, the H T. Um, spaghetti. Okay. You would move <laughs> over the letters one time for each time it appears in your answer. In the junior version, the vowels are included. In the adult version, they're not. And you're trying to get the letters to your side of the board. So you're playing tug of war eight. with all the different letters. And the first person to get eight letters or team to get eight letters is the winner. Why do you like it? Um, I like the part where all the letters are in like a little street sign and the board is a road. Um, and I think that's really cool. Um, I like the part where you try to guess the word, like the longest word that you can think of or with the most consonant or whatever. Um, but I like the part where you move the pieces across the board, trying to get them to your side, um, making sure they don't go to the other side, and that's a lot of fun. All right. So cool. Number 91, Trick Century. And finally, the last game we have this time is Tricks, Tricks and, tweets. and Treats. <laughs> Tricks and Treats is another new game. Candy. It's a small game in which you are trying to get Halloween candy into candy. your pumpkin basket, but no one knows whose pumpkin basket is whose, or do they? Get the most candy in yours, and you're the winner. Throw in some special cards, and the game is even more different. What do you think of it? Um, I like Tricks and Treats because there's candy involved with the game, which I love candy, and so does he. Um, <laughs> what? Yes, you do. Um, Cadbury, cream eggs. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, but I like the part where you don't know whose other baskets you want there are and trying to make sure they don't know whose yours is. Like, um, once I was playing with a friend and he just put all his candy on one basket and someone tried to guess that basket he was putting on, but really it was wrong. Right, there's a lot of bluffing involved yeah. in the game. And I like the special types of baskets, like the piggy bank basket or the bomb basket. Which is really cool. Shut, Shut the door! The door. <laughs> um, and it was just really cool. Alrighty, well there you go, number 91, Tricks and Treats. We're going to come back next week uh, with 10 more, and then 10 more, and then 10 more and 10 more the following week, and we'll do it. But. If you get bored with this list, and I certainly would understand why anybody would. Mine's the best. You can go that to Dicetower.com, and you can see my list, the top 100 list that I'm doing, and also the People's Choice, where we had almost 1,200 people Your vote choice. on their favorite games. So you can find all that at the Dicetower.com. But hey, we need to get going here. So until next time, I'm Tom Vassal. And, and I'm Melody. Woohoo! The star. Melody Vassal's top 100 games of all time.